Hey, welcome to part two of thermochemistry. This is Mr. Aiden. Welcome to Nellon High School. We uh, Hopefully you really enjoyed part one and you thought it was easy. Part two is absolutely even easier. And, uh, and we're going to get right to it tonight. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is Hess's Law, which is another way to find the enthalpy of the reaction. In part one, we learned about one way to find the enthalpy of a reaction, and that was when we've been given the heats of formation. Okay? And we're going to take sum up all the heats of formation of our products and minus the sum of all the heats of formation of our reactants. But tonight we're going to take a look at another way to find the enthalpy of a reaction. And this is when we've been given a list of reactions. When you've been given a list of reactions, go right to Hess's Law. And there's two things, two rules, two options that we can do with each of these reactions. One of them is we can flip the reaction. But if you flip the reaction, you want to make sure you flip the sign of the enthalpy of the reaction, which means you've got to flip the positive to a negative or the negative to a positive. The second thing you can do is you can multiply or divide the coefficients. If you multiply or divide the coefficients, though, you have to make sure you multiply or divide the enthalpy of the reaction by the exact same number. And at the end, you're going to make sure you add up all the enthalpies of the reactions to get the final enthalpy of the reaction. Okay? And that is Hess's Law. Let me give you an example of what Hess's Law is. Take a look at this example. We have three reactions. We have a list of reactions. We're going to do Hess's Law. We have the first, a first reaction where we're producing carbon dioxide gas, second reaction where we're producing liquid water, third reaction where we're producing C2H2, which is ethyne, that one with that triple bond in the middle. And it says, based on the information above, what is the delta H for the following reaction? And you can see in the reaction in blue, it's given us the combustion of ethyne. So what you want to do is you want to zero in on each reaction. So let me just take a look at, just take a look at the first reaction and take a look at my target in blue of what I want it to look like. And look at the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is one thing that is in both reactions. And in the first reaction, my carbon dioxide has one mole. Whereas in my target reaction, what I want it to look like, it has two moles. So what do I want to do with the first reaction? Of course, I want to multiply that reaction by two. And you can take a look. I'm going to multiply. I have two carbons now, two oxygen gases, and two carbon dioxides. And that multiplies my delta H by 2 as well, which becomes negative 787 kilojoules per mole. Let's look at reaction number 2. Uh, I'm going to zero in on the water. I have one mole of water th in the product side. And what do I want? One mole of water in my product side. So for reaction number 2, I don't need to do anything. I can keep it exactly the same, which means the delta H stays exactly the same. Let's take a look at my third reaction. Uh, the C2H2 is what I'm going to zero in on. And you can see it's in the product side, whereas I want it in the reactant side. So what do I have to do? Flip reaction three, which means the C2H2 goes to the reactants whereas the carbon, the two carbons, and the one hydrogen gas goes to the products. And take a look what happened to my sign. It went from positive 226.8 to negative 226.8. If you take a look, when I add up everything, take a look at what cancels out. My two carbons are in my reactants and products. Those cancel out. My hydrogen gases cancel out reactants and products. And my oxygens become two and a half, or five halves and everything else is perfectly done. So what do I do to my delta H's? I add them all up, and I get negative 1299.6 kilojoules per mole, and that's the heat of my reaction. We're also going to take a look at some stoichiometry tonight. Take a look at this heat. I've given you the heat of this reaction. It's, it's the combustion of methane, and it says if 32 grams of methane was combusted, according to the reaction above, how much heat was given off? Well, if we know we have 32 grams of methane, if we have grams, what can we do immediately? Divide by the molar mass. So if we divide by the molar mass, which is 16 grams per mole, you can see how many moles do we have? Two moles. Now, since we have two moles, take a look. If there's negative 900 kilojoules for every one mole of methane, then, of course, we have at the end, we've given off 
1800 kilojoules of heat. We've released or negative 1800 kilojoules of heat. Now, I just want to make a note. If we were doing this calculation for water, per se, it would be negative 900 kilojoules for every two moles of water because we have two moles of water in our reaction. So that is our stoichiometry. The question that you want to do um, and you want to finish up for thermo part two is this. I've given you three reactions up top. I've given you three heats of the reactions. And I want you to calculate the enthalpy of the reaction based on the information above for the reactions carbon plus two hydrogen gases giving methane. And, uh, and for part B, it says if 36 grams of carbon was used in the reaction in part A, how much heat was absorbed or released? Also indicate whether this heat was absorbed or released. So you're going to do part A and part B. Okay, make sure you write down your, your work. That way, if it's wrong, I might have you, I'm going to have you try it again. If it's right, I will send you an email back letting you know that you are good to go. Tune in to Thermo Part 3, and uh, have a great Christmas break, just like I said. Thanks, guys.